And I think we're live. Hello, everybody on the Bright Group and on the Balanced View page. Sorry for a couple minutes delay, last minute technical glitches. We're so happy to be with you all here with Brian today calling in from San Francisco, California. Thank you so much for joining today, Brian. Thank you for the invitation, Johan. I'm happy to be here. Looking Beautiful. forward, looking forward to the conversation. So am I. And friends, as always, we'd love to hear, first of all, we'd love to know that this is actually working, especially with the couple of glitches that we've had. So give us a thumbs up or a heart. And also, we always love to know who, who you are, where you're calling in from. So um, post that too in the comment section here. And uh, any questions that you have along the way while uh, Brian and I are talking here, let us know as well. We we really want to integrate everything that moves you, that is important to you, that will support you in your practice and in your life. So just post it in the comment section. Hello, Heidi. Uh, and then we'll integrate it. I usually can track that while we're talking here. So um, we'll get to you for sure. And um, so the topic for today actually is based on a lot of the questions that we've that we've received in the Bright group, which is a free Facebook group that we have for everybody who wants to know more about the Balanced View training and how you can put the teachings into practice in your daily life to find greater freedom, greater stability, to find peace of mind and to enliven your unique capacity to be of benefit to all. And um, so one of the questions that we often get, especially from newer people is like, how is this different than other things that I've tried? And we usually love to talk firstly about the results because that's really what we all want from a practice, from anything we're doing in life. And when I had a quick chat with Brian uh, via email, it was just really clear we could pick so many areas of your life, Brian, um, that have seen results from your practice. And so um, a way to structure our conversation, I thought, is to maybe just start by looking at when you found out about the Balanced View training and where you were at in life, like what you were up to, what were things going on in your life, and then what you, know, what you found compelling about the Balanced View practice or approach when you first came. So how does that sound? Do, shall we start there? That sounds great. Lovely. So. Go for it. <laughs> Great. Well, I was originally introduced to the Balance View training, actually to the founder of Balance View, Candace O'Denver, in 2006. She came to give a talk at a studio where I was working, a Pilates studio where I was working, and uh, a Balance View trainer owned that studio. Many of you know her, Carrie. Anyways, I listened to the talk with Candace and uh, at the time, I had my own practices and decided not to pursue the Balance View training. But fast forward five years to 2011, and that's when I got my authentic introduction to the, to the training. At that time, I was completely tied up in knots in terms of thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, and being totally, um, we have a great saying in English, to be caught between a rock and a hard place. I really felt that I had no more wiggle room at that time in my life. I was in a long-term marriage that was unraveling before my eyes. We had a son together and I really wanted to make that, I knew it was going to be a transition and I wanted to make that transition in the most harmonious, beneficial way possible. And fortunately at that time, my good friend Carrie said to me, I'm teaching, an, I'm teaching an introductory class on open intelligence, which is the beginning stage of of being introduced to the balance view training. And at that time I thought I have nothing to lose, even though I had my own practices and thought I would continue with that. I had been involved, been involved with various streams of Buddhist practice for many years. And um, <clears throat> anyways, I took, I took her invitation, took her up on her invitation to check out the uh, class on open intelligence. And I just had an immediate, immediate response to that. The, the instruction given right away was to, oh, I lost Johan's picture there. I hope you can still hear me. But anyways, I had immediate response to um, the initial instructions, which were to stop thinking for just a moment and notice what's there. And what I noticed was 
a complete open expanse of undisturbed peace. And so that tremendous turmoil that I was going through and in, in being part of a, of a relationship that was changing and unraveling with its complications, as well as a lot of personal self-doubt about what I was doing in life and whether I was actually being of benefit and if I really had anything to offer the world of benefit. So um, back then, I, looking at it now, that seemed like a very stressful time to me, but now I'm completely grateful for that because mm -hmm. that's what introduced me to Balanced View. So it was actually that tension and that complete blockage that brought me to the place where I could hear, stop thinking for just a moment and notice, notice what's there. And what was there was the peace that surpasses all understanding, which we, we come to experience directly. And so I have tremendous respect for these teachings in the sense that you don't have to wait around for very poignant teachings to be delivered right away. You're introduced to the nature of your mind immediately, and then you're supported all along the way in that. And that's, mm. been, that's been my relentless experience and balanced view of being given impeccable support from that initial moment of introduction of complete relaxation and peace and then being supported and recognizing that over and over and over again until you're much more stable and much more able to, to serve in whatever way that may be. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction. And since then I've been off and running with it and using the entire support system of Balanced View, which is very extensive. And that's another very skillful quality of, of our founder to have given us a support structure that supports you every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So. Wow, that was a quite a blast! Thank you, Brian, so much. That was amazing. Um, so I can hear a lot of enthusiasm, which obviously makes me really happy. I'd love to hear because you know, obviously, we have a lot of people here who have also, like you did, like I have, a lot of background practices that we're coming with here. And you just mentioned Buddhist practices and 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 teachings. Um, was there anything specific that you that you were practicing to you, you mentioned the the unraveling of your marriage how did you try and use those practices or teachings to support you in that situation or I, I don't know was there anything that, that that you tried to apply to that situation or how how did that look well, I had been introduced to a variety of meditation practices, which I was doing, but there was always a sense of this personal self doing that, of, of, of really efforting to try to get somewhere, a, a destination orientation of, of wanting mm -hmm. to be free of problems, wanting to be enlightened. And um, I could never... I could never use the practice itself to cut through that idea uh, or that that feeling, that felt feeling of a, of a separate self doing these practices to try to open up to the vast expanse. They, they just, so it they, felt like an effort? Is, 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 tremendous effort, yes. Mm -hmm. And a and striving from what I'm hearing so that you were trying to, the practice was designed to bring you to a future point where you would reach that state in which the effort would fall away basically or yes. was that was that the idea yes mm -hmm. yes and, and uh, uh, sorry but, go ahead but those practices ended up kind of further substantializing a, a separate self this self that was working so hard to be free and i was missing something that was right under my nose you know, and the, the complete relaxation part, which was introduced right away in balanced view of dropping all that conceptual thinking and intellectualization around notions that were very appealing to me, like no self and emptiness. I really, coming out of a Catholic tradition, which is how I was raised, first part of early part of my life, my childhood, um, I really wanted to experience that quality of no self, uh, of being, you know, to put it in that my, my Catholic upbringing, God's perfect love or being complete emptiness, completely open to the entire world. And mm -hmm. I was going in the opposite direction through the meditation practices of kind of further substantializing into a separate self that was working so hard 
to get something that was right under my nose. I was missing the relaxation part of just completely letting go of all in intellectualization and conceptualization. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and so when you, as you try to use that in such a situation, like with your marriage unraveling, as you said, um, how did that how did that feel to you in that moment where you were trying to apply something or look for something that you somehow i can hear that in you you knew it's possible but you didn't quite know how to access it although you kind of had a gut sense is is that right like you knew in your heart somewhere it must be possible because you've been diligently working on it so to speak so somewhere you must have had like a trust or a, a knowing or something that kept you going on that path. Yes, I had many flashes of complete openness where I, I did experience what I was talking about of, of no self and just complete openness to the whole world and, and to the, the access to all pervasive love. But it, it could not stabilize because I, I, did, I, not I did not have really steady connection with a teacher and, and a community to, to support me, you know, and I also had a certain personal arrogance in thinking that I could do all of this on my own. You know, that was a really strong thing too, that I had to do all of this on my own. And that further contributed to feeling isolated and more compressed into a separate self, which was working so hard. Mm -hmm. I can completely relate. Which is interesting, actually, I think it's mostly a Western thing that we're trying to reach that state of oneness or or, or perfect love and ultimate connection, but we want to do it by ourselves. <laughs> it's like it, it's in itself a contradiction, but it's it's so ingrained in everything we're doing is like we have to achieve, we have to work. We probably in my case, some part of me also wanted to prove it to myself and to everybody around me that I could do this by myself or something like that. And uh, so it's, it, it isn't very common to just say, oh yeah, sure, support me finding a teacher, finding a community that um, isn't usually the first thing that we're trying to do on that, on that quest for yeah, spiritual fulfillment or enlightenment or whatever it is that, that we'd be calling that. Mm -hmm. So how did that feel to you with the disposition? Then you said it was five years you, you had heard about, or you had, heard, you had heard that talk with Candice directly, 2006, kept practicing your own things. And then five years later, you then uh, took that introduction class that you mentioned and, um, and you you felt the immediate introduction to the true nature of mind so it wasn't anymore a future destination but it was a complete confirmation that is already happening right here in that very moment not anything that you need to wait for how did that feel to you like how how was that moment for you after all these years that moment was I found what I was looking for. It's this exactly is what I was looking for because I, I came in such a desperate situation at that time in 2011 feeling just so uncomfortable in my own skin, very anxious and very uncertain about how I was gonna proceed in the future. And um, I needed, I recognized at that time that I needed help. And I was so fortunate to be connected to someone who I could see was a really helpful person. In, mm. It felt to have it felt so important to have a live human being there who had more experience than I had and who was completely available. I could feel this person was so available that it was a direct transmission of love, actually. Mm -hmm. And that connection served me all the way through the separation and divorce and moving on into um, what came after, you know, all, all the all the continuing to stick with these teachings and develop strength and being an open, available person. Mm -hmm. so. so from what I'm hearing so far is there were um, three things that made a real difference for you. So one is the, the, the immediate, the instant introduction to the true nature of mind, where, where you have an immediate benefit in, in the introduction already. It isn't a future destination. The second was, you mentioned a couple of times, having a teacher 
you also mentioned before having a community. So um, these three things were what what shifted the your you could say your spiritual approach or your 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 practice and how you were approaching also then your personal life, like that divorce situation with your with your wife at the time. Was there anything specific that you found helpful in in that transition period? Like how did you use either the teacher or the community or um, the teaching? I, I guess you did the 12 empowerments at the time. Was that? That was at the pretty, time, yes. Yeah, how, how was that for you going through the 12 empowerments at well, that that's a key. That's the key plat. That's the key launching point, really, in in the Bounce View training uh, for me and for everyone else. I'm sure the introduction is great. You get this tremendous relief on the spot, but then you're introduced to this very carefully laid out educational program to show you how addicted you are to your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and sensations. I mean, it's the ultimate addiction recognition and recovery program from being so fixated on thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, and other experiences is that you can't see the bigger picture. And that's what, you know, that's what Balanced View has really given me, the ability to, to live as the bigger view, to live as the bigger picture all the time, instead of funneling my attention all the time into specific mind states, you know, and labeling everything. That's another thing that's opened up completely. I don't use labels anymore. I used to see myself as as an anxious person at that time, and that that just doesn't come up anymore. That kind of labeling has been opened up completely, and there's such a such a relief and freedom in that. Hmm. And uh, that that applies to everyone. You know, it, it's so important. Again, the, the teachings in Balanced View always point right back at you. You know, Candace has said it, it always starts with number one, and number one is you, your direct experience. And once you have a clear relationship with your own mind streams, your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, every, everything blossoms from there. You have a much smoother relating with every other human being on the planet. So mm. that has been so helpful to get my own act, get my own act together and then mm -hmm. be avail and then I'm so much more available to others. So that harmonization, that empowerment of your relationship with yourself, um, not just your, you could say your your higher self, but really the nitty gritty details. You mentioned anxieties. Is is that something like? Do these things still come up for you, or or and, and it's just a different relationship, or are they no longer coming up at all, or how how is that for you, or how has it been since you said two thousand eleven? There were probably a gradual opening, or how was that for you in 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 that? relationship with those nitty-gritty details that you've mentioned well regarding anxiety that hardly comes up anymore and when it does come up when signs and symptoms of what i used to call anxiety come up they're so light that they're not they're not even bothersome in, in any way it's it's, it's nothing, amazing nothing like it was before i used to mm -hmm. spend i used to spend so much time sort of grinding in the same mental cycle of, th of trying to think my way out of of this and and thinking something was wrong with me, you know that, that oh, for I, having the anxiety. Yeah, for having you know these strong sensations and and thought loops that would continue, and I tried everything. You know, I try, I was also involved in yoga. You know, doing yoga practice and breath work and herbal medicine and all kinds of things, trying to damp all of this down and get comfortable in my own skin. So, you know, it really does start with each one of us learning to accommodate our own mind streams, you know, to to have a proper relationship with the content of our experience. And that's an invaluable gift to be to be given that skill to relate sanely with your own mind, you mm -hmm. know. We're not it's a basic education that most of us aren't schooled in, you know, mm -hmm. is how to relate properly with with the contents of our experience. Mm -hmm. And not make it not make it into a bigger situation. So by letting your by letting the anxiety, if we just stick with that example for a moment, by letting the anxiety be and and like you said, not not focusing in on it, um, 
what we're finding, this is, um, you obviously know this if you're on direct experience, but just to share that also with everybody else here, um, we're finding that these things that we've basically used a lot of our spiritual or psychological and even other practices around to like no longer have them, we become free from, from the from the compulsion to work on them, to change them, to get rid of them, to further harm ourselves by blaming ourselves for even having them. And um, what happens is increasingly we see that we don't have to do anything with them. All we do is we return to the authentic introduction to the true nature of mind. And we can see that it's always already naturally present, stable and clear. So whatever the, you called it the mind stream, whatever the content of our mind does, it doesn't alter the, the fundamental nature of mind. And that's where we find that ultimate stability. So rather than trying to find stability in the absence of negative states and in, in, in the presence of positive states, we're finding that all these states are based on the fundamental nature of the mind, um, which is like in a crystal ball that the crystal ball doesn't change no matter what image appears within it. So to have that kind of freedom, like you said, it, it harmonizes and empowers the relationship with ourselves at the very root, at the very core, because we're no longer basing that on the labels and descriptions. So that's, that's just totally awesome to hear that some of these things basically don't even come up for you anymore. You know, and to show you the results, I could not be sitting here right now talking to you and talking to a worldwide community if I didn't have this training, because my self-consciousness would have completely obstructed my ability to even mm. communicate, because I'd be thinking so much about my performance and, oh, am I sounding intelligent or, oh, am I, am I able to articulately express what I want to express? And I would have been... I would have said no to your invitation to be on, on a program like this. You know, and that also speaks to the skillful means of the educational process in Balanced View is that every single participant is given a voice, which is quite amazing when you think about it. Because other spiritual settings that I've been in, there's the teacher, there's, there's a person on high, and there's very little interaction at, at times between disciples and teacher. Their, their voice is not heard and they're not encouraged to express themselves. But we have all kinds of structures and balanced view, whether it's book meetings or open meetings or regular calls that we can be a part of. Many, many ways for participants' voices to be heard and for people to hear themselves mm -hmm. speak. So it's, it's mutually empowering all along the way. And this was something totally new to me and years ago, I never could have sat before you and a worldwide community and expressed anything, anything clear or meaningful because I would have been completely self-obsessed and self-focused about how I was going to do. So just this simple example of me sitting here right now and speaking to you is, is clear to me that it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, quite a gift to have received this. That sounds inconceivable because you are so clear. Um, but but I can I can relate completely um, that that uh, self consciousness and then just getting absorbed in my own case into just thinking 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 and so much like worrying and concern and then being just all tied up in knots basically and 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 not there is no connection there anymore and and it's amazing to just no longer even be thinking about this. It's just amazing. Well, you know that public speaking is one of the most terrifying things that many people will face. You know, getting mm. up in front of an audience and speaking, oh, that's a that's a challenging thing, you know, to see oneself as a as a separate individual having to be upright and clear and present well in front of a group. That that's uh that can be terrifying. But to, mm. to drop all of that stuff, even if it appears, to just let it be as it is and let it sort of sizzle in the background, <laughs> let it sizzle in the background on the gr on the griddle of awareness. You know, it's it's amazing. You know that inseparability of all of our all of our thought streams, all of our mind streams, with with this undisturbed 
open awareness is quite something to to know. You know, it's a it's a great gift we've received in that way. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and it goes right to a, another question we had this week uh, was about around fear, and it's amazing to see in in my own experience how just being so comfortable with everything that goes on for me in whatever situation it is, it really brings us into, into an empowerment of being fearless, even in the face of fear. So even if that fear might come up, like you said, you might be like looking into this camera, seeing yourself and thinking, oh my God. But at the same time, there is the capacity that we don't have to be, be distracted by that. That is amazing because my progress that I've always wanted to make, I always measured that by, oh my God, there it is again, fear, anxiety, loneliness, depression, sadness, desire, greed, whatever it is, anger. That means I have failed. I, I have failed myself. I have felt my practice or I have failed God or I have felt my partner or whoever. It was always a failure. And today to know that this just means zero, it means nothing. And it just means whatever I, whatever meaning I attribute to it. And it's it's such a freedom, such a relief. So, Brian, how how did that impact the relationship with your at the time with your wife, and then today your your ex wife? Like, how did you see these results that you found in the relationship with yourself? How did that impact or ripple out and support you in that in that transition? Well, the transition was super smooth because I I had this introduction and I had this support. So we both, my ex-wife and I, her name is Myla, we both realized we really wanted each other to be happy. And, and we were mm. not happy we were not happy together. And we were we were taking different courses in our life and we were going in different directions. But the 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 motivation for mutual happiness was there. So we did everything possible to make the transition as super smooth as possible with very competent mediation and moving on and taking care of all the practicalities in a very careful way. And now we have a relationship that's very friendly and we can be together without any residue of animosity or ill will in any way. In fact, it's quite joyful to be together. And we're always so connected because we we have a beautiful sun together, and that'll never go away. You know that's that's beautiful. We both share in that. So the transition was actually beneficial for both of us to mm -hmm. to move into new chapters of our lives and realize we didn't have to have a grudge about anything. You know, we did the best we could. You know, and that's another thing we come to realize through these teachings is that everyone is doing the best they can with their own circumstances, their own, their own mind streams, their own, their own data streams. They're doing the best they can. And I used to be a very harsh critic of, of myself and other people thinking that, oh, they're not doing the best they can. They're doing this, that, and the other thing. But now I realize how fixated I was on my own stuff and other people are in the same boat. You know, they're, they're focused on their own stuff. And it leads to a lot of tension and, and stress in the world and things not going well for the benefit of all. Mm. So once that opens up, things get a lot better. And the more individuals that know themselves well and are at ease with themselves, the greater world will have in the collective sense. I mean, that's the whole thing is, is individuals knowing themselves. The reason we don't have peace and harmony in the world because there's very few individuals that actually know peace and harmony in their own direct experience. It's that clear. You know, you, you can't pass that on if you don't know it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like Candace said the other day, it's not so much about what you do. It's, it, it's who you are, what you are, what you know yourself to be. And then when, when that is in place, then naturally what you do follows from that and it's very hard like you said to be i've always tried to be at peace with other people just because i was raised that way that that was one of the moral and ethical ideals but when you're like cooking inside <laughs> to then just remain friendly open relaxed not just peaceful as in the absence of war but peaceful as in really relational and heart connected when when that connection isn't there with us like you said in the beginning then um, we'll always be afraid 
about really connecting and opening up to other people. So there can never be peace in the world, true peace, not just the absence of war, but true peace can never be there un un unless everybody is completely at peace within ourselves. And then peace is more like a consequence of, of that, an unavoidable consequence of that. And then I've seen, you know, through my interactions with the larger Balanced View communi community, like going to the Sweden Center, for example, in the, in the summer training, I, I didn't go this past summer, but the summer before, that was such an incredible confirmation of people taking responsibility for their own experience and being available for one another. And it's just a remarkable to be with 150 plus people from 20 different countries around the world and everyone working harmoniously together and having a great time. No complaining, no backbiting, no gossiping, none of the things that we might hear in our daily life in work situations or other situations. So every step of the way I've been given confirmation, not only in my own direct experience of taking in the in instructions to stop thinking for just a moment, to relax completely and notice the view that's totally pristine and open, you know? Not only that simple instruction, but also everywhere I looked, from the trainers I interact with, from the community members I interact with, there was a feedback of confirmation of mm -hmm. people taking responsibility for their mind streams, not in the sense of tinkering with them and trying to figure them out, but letting them be as they are. Mm -hmm. Such a simple instruction. So, Right, and it all builds, like summing that up, um... This went like so fast. It feels like we've just spoken for five minutes and I see it's like more than half an hour. Or so uh, just in, in, in summarizing this a little bit, um, it really starts with the authentic introduction to the true nature of mind. Like that's where everything, we were speaking about hip hinges before, but this is where, <laughs> this is where, where everything here, all the results hinge on, on, on that. That's really where, where everything starts. The foundation is the authentic introduction to the true nature of mind. And then you mentioned the teacher, the teaching, the 12 empowerments teaching and the community, which support in implementing that simple practice, that one simple change that comes with the introduction that support to bring that into everyday life, into every relationship to the outshining of all of those attention grabbing thoughts and emotions so that we can access that stability that peace that freedom and bring that into into all relationships so beautiful brian is there is there anything we haven't touched upon yet that you feel moved to share i i feel this was like a beautiful and complete conversation already but i i'd love to hear you talk about anything else that you feel we 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 have missed so far it does feel like we've only been talking for five minutes and I see on my computer it's 10.08. So that is amazing. Time takes on a totally different quality in this practice too. Like just now being so engaged with someone and really listening and wanting to contribute, time time just opens up completely. And, and that's been a beautiful aspect of my life too, of not being so schedule bound or time bound. One of the things that's emphasized over and over in this training is spontaneity, spontaneousness of everything. Anything can happen at any time. And to be prepared, prepared for that, we need to relax completely and, and just be open. And in that great pooling of openness, we can, we can work with anything that arises, including our own death. And one of the things I really bow to our, our teacher for is that reminder that death can come at any moment. And I'm of the age now, I'm no spring chicken anymore. I'm approaching 60 and people around me, loved ones are starting to die. And I can feel my own body changing tremendously and impermanence is right there in my face. And um, I have always intuitively felt that I want to die with, with gratitude and grace, no matter, no matter what it is. You know, I wanna be able to face everything with a stability of mind. And, um, give you an example my mother died suddenly this this past march you know and it was it was an initial shock to think that i'm not going to see her anymore in her physical form but through these practices i realized that we're way more than our physical form we go way beyond our physical form and that 
the stream of love is unending and we're totally connected in that way. And plus I was even happy for her, not that her physical form died and I wouldn't be able to see her physical form anymore, but that she had told me months before, she looked me right in the eye and she said, I'm not afraid to die. And when my time comes, I wanna go quickly. And guess what? She got her wish. So that was, it was beautiful. She was starting to really degenerate in her body. And I could see many years of great health difficulties coming up. And so in a way, death came as a beautiful, as a beautiful gift to her. And she was facing it too. She said, I'm not afraid to die. I'm, and I'm ready to go if it comes. And so this prepares us for anything, the death of loved ones, our own death. We, we may face anything extremely difficult in the next minute. And yet, in openness, we're able to accept all of that and 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 work in a skillful way with all of that. So that's a that's a great education to have received. Wow, I can tell in just how you shared that experience that your goal of dying with grace and peace is you're you're definitely there. You're on the right track already. That's that's so beautiful, and I loved how you know, in this experience, your primary concern wasn't on you and your loss. It was on, you could see like with the heart of compassion that, that your mother received or fulfilled her, her, her greatest wish for her own transition. That's just such a beautiful perspective. And yeah, that, that you can see the, the relationship continues. I've seen that with, with a, a couple loved ones who aren't around anymore in, in, in this form, that in my heart, the relationship is, it's just completely present. And in, in, in some ways, it's even more obvious how indivisible they are from, from my own being because I'm no longer projecting that onto their physical being. I can just see it directly in my experience. It's like they're right here. It's just such a beautiful, such a beautiful experience. Thank you for sharing that so openly. That's so You're welcome. So beautiful. Friends, thank you for for, for staying with us for so long today. Um, beautiful speaking with Brian. And uh, if any of you are interested in doing like a, a reality check, Brian mentioned so generously in the beginning his own practices. If if you would like to just look with one of us at your practices today and see how they're working, where they're not working, and where you would like support in your everyday, day-to-day -day life of, of living with greater fulfillment, with greater peace, of no longer struggling with stuff that's bringing you suffering to your life right now. We're actually having these, what we call breakthrough calls, where we meet with you it's the call is for free and, and we offer those calls because we really want to check in with you and see where are you at in life and what could be a good next step. And so we, we consider what's working, what's not working and what those next steps could be. And if, if any of the things that we're offering in Balance View could be a good next step, we'll suggest that, of course. And um, if other things might look better, whether that's like a... I don't know, a career coaching or a, a, a nutrition program or something else. We've had all these things come up in the past and we'll also suggest that. So really the point of the call is to just look at your life and get you more clear on what your next steps could be. So we'll post a link to schedule one of those calls into the comment section. Just find a time that works for you. Book a call. We'll be so happy to speak with you and meet you and talk about your life and your next steps in life so that you can find some of those amazing results that Brian was just sharing. I mean, there is no reason to wait. If any of this sounded compelling, then let's talk about how we could get you closer to that. Thank you so much, Brian. This was just so heartwarming and fantastic. I enjoyed every moment of our talk together. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for Beautiful. the opportunity, Jochen. And thanks everyone for listening and being a part of it. Thank you, friends, for joining. See you soon again. Bye-bye. Have a lovely day.